Excellent. Right now, well, we have uh, uh, Pastor Terry Hurrigan here from... Uh, now, I actually didn't do my due diligence homework and get all the sort of background of the different roles that you're involved in, but I know you're involved in uh, uh, um, church pla- interviewing church planters. Hey? Well, that's right. Being her PA, I let you down and I didn't get all the information. But um, for many of us that have been coming along to Arise for a while, you would know Pastors Terry and Gary Hurrigan. They minister here every year quite frequently. Uh, I don't know if this is your first time on Sunday morning with us. No, it's not, eh? Yeah, that's right. Did you preach? You preached here before, haven't you? I can't even preach Sunday morning. Well, you're preaching this morning. You're preaching this morning. So let's put our hands together for Pastor Terry Hurrigan. Thanks, Alan. Well, here I am. We're back. Born for more. (laughs) And she loved the more. There's always more. (laughs) And uh, I make my apologies for being late. I remember saying to um, somebody recently, you know, I'm never late. I'm always early. And I was late yesterday for an appointment because I got the daylight saving mixed up and late today because of a bat, flat battery. So I was stuck in Ballina at uh, 9.30 this morning wondering how I was going to get here. So praise God for um, connections in Ballina. Pastor uh, Venice White came to the rescue <laughs> and gave me her car. So um, I zipped on over here and yes, so we're determined to push on for a a powerful morning this morning. So before I begin, I just want to just begin by praying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the power of your word, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. And I thank you, God, that your word is going to pierce through the soul and the spirit of of men and women today. And I thank you, Father, that you are making a way in the hearts of people. You are preparing hearts to receive this word which will set the captives free. So, Father God, I just uh, release every person here today into your presence, Father God, that they can sit and hear what the Holy Spirit would have uh, say to you this day and for this season in Jesus' name. So Arise Church, as I was just praying about this morning and, you know, confirmations with chats with your pastors, just really believe that you're, you're stepping into um, new spiritual territory. Uh, you, you're stepping up. Um, and that's probably why, you know, suddenly there, there's some... Um, Uh, things that would hinder you, things that might be blocking you, things that you may not have been uh, aware in the past are suddenly um, raising its head. And it's because I believe that there's been a a real shift um, where you're coming into a higher place of authority. And it is good news for each and every one of you to take a hold of that new ground because that's where you'll find your true identity. And that's where you'll start to really um, take a hold of who you are in Christ and see the power of God and the power of his word um, alive and active. Not just uh, words um, falling in hard ground, but I just see that you're coming into a place where you're really going to come in with that sword and you're going to start to cut through and pave the way for others. So it's an exciting season, but it brings um, a challenge, a challenging season um, as well. But God doesn't abandon um, us in those seasons. God does not abandon us in those challenges. But God equips us and anoints us to come forward and to come into a greater capacity in him and increase his kingdom uh, effect in your lives so that you can um, influence others as well. And this morning I just want to bring some insights that will... Uh, bring that, that thing, that, that spirit that can raise its head because, you know, that there is an enemy and we've got to get our heads around that we are in a constant battle zone. But the battle is not yours to fight. 
but the battle is for us to be positioned in him so that the battle is given over to the Lord. So we, we find our position in Christ, anointed in the Holy Spirit, identifying with that new creation. And when you stand in that place, the battle is then the Lord's. And you know that when the battle is given over to God, you do have the victory. You've just got to stand fast until you see that breakthrough um, come, because it, it will. So as I said this morning, I want to bring some insights into um, what will bring that spirit down. And it's a spirit that can hold your family hostage and keep you in a cycle of conflict and resentment if we don't break through. And God is anointing his people afresh with boldness to take a hold of everything that he has given us. He is a generous God. All good things have come from above. Everything that we need to break through and live a life of freedom and victory has been given to us. But it's up to us to take a hold of it and stand fast with what he's given us. In Mark chapter 3, verse 27, it says, Jesus said to them, Listen, no one is able to break into a mighty man's house and steal his property unless he first overpowers the mighty man and ties him up. And then his entire house can be plundered and his possessions taken. And today I want to speak specifically about intimidation. Intimidation is a strong man. Intimidation comes, rears its, its loud... Um, uh, intimidating voice to you that says thus far and, and no further you take another step and I'm going to take your family out it's full of threats to harm you and to uh, condemn you and to hold you captive in a place of bondage and so that's why it's so important that we've got to overcome that and I'm declaring today you, you're going to overcome it as a church and as an army, you, you will take on that intimidation because it is a strong man that can block a breakthrough. But your breakthrough is on the other side of it. So today we're going to speak about David and Goliath, a, a story that uh, is very familiar to us, no doubt. But God has given me some keys in, in that passage that I feel um, is for your church this morning. And if we look at David's background, he was the youngest in the family of three sons and he was overlooked when Samuel, the prophet, came seeking for, um, seeking for who God had chosen to become king of Israel. When, Dan when uh, Samuel approached um, David's family, the father was, was pushing forward the older brothers, have a look at um, the older one, have a look at the second one. But, Dave, but Samuel continued to o overlook those ones until finally the father said, well, there's David back in the fields tending to his shepherd. So David uh, was raised in a home where he was overlooked. He was the youngest he was the one that, you know, wasn't going to do anything really significant in his life, according to his status in our family. And sometimes our upbringing can have a very significant effect on how we view ourselves. You know, it, it, you might be the middle child, you might be the youngest child, you might be the older child, but you always maybe had felt that you'd been overlooked because, you know, it, it always went to someone else. Somebody else was always put forward. And so in that place, we start to believe a lie that we'll never really achieve anything in our lives. We'll never really accomplish anything. We'll never really have the confidence to really make a mark in, in this world. But God has anointed a plan for David. And I want to tell you this morning that God has anointed you and set you apart for great exploits. We have got to dream bigger 
in the kingdom of God so that we can make a bigger splash and a bigger impact, not only in our families' lives, but in the lives of our community. You are anointed to lead. You are anointed to lead your family. You are anointed to leave others in the kingdom of God, to continue to, to break through and, and overcome what has um, set us back in the, in the past, even as kids growing up. And it's amazing how past statements from childhood can come to mind when God positions you for a breakthrough. And if we look at David, when he comes to the front line in the battle between King Saul and the Philistine army, and I'll just read that scripture where his brothers blocked him and, and confronted David with what the heck he thought that he was doing when David was inquiring about the battle that they were facing. And in 1 Samuel 17, verse 28, it says, Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few, pe few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. So his own brother was blocking David when, block, when David was inquiring, why aren't the army at war? Why aren't you ready for battle? Why aren't you advancing? And so his brother comes along and accuses him of being arrogant. And sometimes, you know, the, the devil can trick us into thinking if we, if we have a dream, if we have, you know, a, a desire to, you know, step out of our past, overcome you know, obstacles from our past that we, we can falsely think that we're coming into a, a place of arrogance if we listen to the enemy. Who do, you, who do you think you are? Aren't you the youngest of your family? Aren't you the one that's supposed to be tending sheep? What do you think you're doing here in the front line of the battle when you should be back there? And so these things can, the spirit, it's, it's a voice that can come and start bringing a condemning and an, an accusation and a belittling. And that's what the intimidation done, it does. It belittles you. It makes it seem bigger than who you are. But the truth is that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But when we listen to that and when we give ear to that and the voices of our past come through, we start thinking, oh, well, what the heck am I doing here? Did God really say that he had a promise for my life? That he really had a destiny for me? And I just see that in the past, doors have been opened to you. But this intimidation has, has, has raised its head and you said, no, well, that's, that's not for me. That's for somebody else who's way more qualified than me, who's way more, you know, just, just better or... And because we've listened to that voice, we shrink our identity down, way below the potential of who God is in us. So God wants us to dream big. God doesn't want us to keep um, where, you're, where you are right now. God's kingdom is always advancing. There's always territory there's always another step and so don't feel that you know you've ever arrived or this is okay for me I don't want to rock the boat too much start increasing your capacity in God and laying a hold of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and you'll start dreaming bigger and speaking with a great boldness of what you could accomplish in him he wants us positioned for big influence. And I'll just come into that passage where David confronts Goliath and how Goliath spoke to David. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 4 to 11, and I'm going to speak out of the message. A giant nearly 10 feet tall stepped out from the Philistine line into the open, and Goliath from Gath, he had a bronze helmet on his head and was dressed in armour. 
126 pounds of it. He wore bronze shin guards and carried a bronze sword. His spear was like a fence rail. The spear tip alone weighed over 15 pounds. His shield bearer walked ahead of him. And Goliath stood there and called out to the Israelite troops, Why bother using your whole army? Am I not Philistine enough for you? And you're all committed to Saul, aren't you? So pick your best fight, fighter and pit him against me. And if he gets the upper hand and kills me, the Philistines will become your slaves. But get this, but if I get the upper hand and kill him, you'll all become our slaves and serve us. And I challenge the troops of Israel this day, give me a man, let us fight it out together. And when Saul and his troops heard the Philistines' challenge, they were terrified and lost all hope. What a dismal situation for the Israelite. These are God's people. These are God's chosen nation. And here they are cowering before a Goliath. What happened to King Saul? Why was he not leading the charge? And it says in 1 Samuel 16, 14, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. The Holy Spirit had left Saul because he, his, his last venture, he radically disobeyed God and the anointing left his life. So as a result, he lost his confidence that God was with him and evidence of fear and a cowering from the enemy took a hold of his heart. There was no boldness and he came under the fear of man more than the fear of God. And it's like that with us. The Holy Spirit doesn't leave us, but it can drain from us. It's always there, but the Holy Spirit has got to be constantly regenerated and refilled in our life. And I have to say, it, it's, it's daily, daily we've got to step into the Holy Spirit. Daily we've got to step into the anointing to overcome. It's a daily battle but if we allow our ear to come to listen to that intimidation the Holy Spirit just kind of drains out of us we need to plug in to our power source again and build your spirit man with the Holy Spirit it's ironic this morning I turn on the car no battery I'm looking at my iPad, not charging too well. The iPhone, nearly out of battery. <laughs> it just seems we need to recharge. You've got to recharge your phone every day. You've got to recharge your iPad every day. And you've got to check the battery in your car <laughs> occasionally. Otherwise, it just won't get you there. And to do that, can I encourage you Speaking in tongues is a real key. I know that the Holy Spirit pulled, pulled me up on that. Just feeling, you know, it's, 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 you're just battling in your own strength and you know when you're there because you're just tired. Everything seems just hard work. Everything is just such, such a struggle. And yes, I was reading the word and yes, I was praying, but God highlighted to me when was the last time you spoke in tongues and edified yourself. And I find that, you know, tongues is, is, is kind of a forgotten tool sometimes in our, in our repertoire of, of weapons. So I started again just to refuel and speaking in tongues, it edifies. What does that mean? It builds you. You become bold. You become strong. And the word of God starts to flow out of your, your, your mouth and you start uh, praying like God wants you to be praying. Not praying from a place of begging God for the crumbs, but a place of authority where you find who you are again in Christ, where you remember past battles of what he has done for you. And these are all things to proclaim and profess in the midst of 
of challenges that are trying to hinder you from breaking into new ground. We've got to change into our other person, which is in Christ. Before the Holy Spirit left Saul, in 1 Samuel 10, verse 6, it says, The Spirit of the Lord will come powerfully upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will be changed into a different person. We, we are a different person in Christ. Our personalities, our introvert, extrovert, backgrounds, past, should never dictate and overpower of who God says that we are. You don't earn it. You can't tick off the boxes before you feel that you've got the right to claim it. It has been given to us. And it's just for us to receive who we are in Christ, that we are that new creation, that all things have passed away. And when the voices of the past start you know, coming to pull you back into that place of belittlement and insignificance, we've got to grab a hold again. It's active. And can I just um, encourage you, when those voices come, nip it in the bud. Don't be listening to it all day long, all week long, all month long, because before you know it, you'll find yourself cowering in fear and intimidation and anxiety and all those things can come into our family. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. We carry the unction to speak boldly in the faces of attack. We can become someone outside of our natural behaviour and identify with Christ's nature. David refused Saul's armour. The story goes on in uh, verse 39. David strapped his sword on his clothing. And this is uh, Saul's armour that Saul had given David. He strapped his sword on his clothing and he tried to move, for he had not tested it. And then David said to Saul, I can't go with these, for I have not tested them. So then I took them off. You cannot win any intimidation battle by coming under other people's expectations. And sometimes people can pressure you to be someone that you're not or put something on you that is an expectation from them, but it's not who God wants of you. We can't compare ourselves to others and God has them on a different path to you. You've got to find your own armour, find what fits for you. David just, he couldn't move in that armour. It was clunky, it didn't fit, and it just wasn't him. So in his wisdom, he didn't pursue Goliath with somebody else's armour. Otherwise, he would have been taken out. He had to be quick on his feet. He had to get that sling with those stones, which he was very um, equipped and skilled in. And those things used to just fly, and it's like a modern-day sniper. Those things would fly, and they used to um, throw those things with such accuracy that they would hit their enemy in the neck up. It's quite amazing, the skill that, that is involved in the sling and the stones. But in saying that, you know, this is what the Holy Spirit sort of woke me up last night. He has no consideration for time. Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> there's, I keep saying to myself, there's no time in the Spirit. You know, there's no sleeping for the Holy Spirit. He's at, he's at work all the time, you know, and I'll, I'll quite often, praise God, I've got the grace to be able to continue on, get, have broken sleep because God has woken me up in the middle hours of the morning. And rather than for you, that might happen to you, rather than just <clears throat> taking another sleeping tablet or another magnesium and just <laughs> um, trying to get back to sleep, just, just ponder and, and, and just consider... Holy Spirit, is there something that you want to say to me in this hour? Because he speaks day and night and he's not interested in our timetables at all. <laughs> but I just had a word for husbands and wives this morning, particularly in concerns with this armour. 
There are times for your husbands when, you're, when you can put your armour for what God has designed for you to move in, for the anointing for you to flow in. And if you don't use that armour and use that anointing, by default you can transfer it onto your wife who has never been designed for that armour. Amen? And God is doing a a real shift um, in placing the right authority on the men and the women. And likewise with the women, sometimes we can put our expectations, which is our armour, onto our husbands and it's not the right fit for him. And after, you know, 44 odd years of marriage for myself, I've had to progressively learn this. Learn what is Gary's role and how he fights his battle. And I have observed that it is not the way I fight my battle. And I used to get so upset. Why isn't he, you know, reading the word? Why isn't he, you know doing what I do, basically. But you know what? He was getting the word into him. He's in the car a lot. He's listening to podcasts. He's listening to audiograms. He he reads books that I would never touch. But I found that God had to just sort of pull me up and, and in pulling me up, I found a real shift in our relationship Gone was the frustration, gone was the resentment and I saw Gary step into his place to lead our family and our marriage according to how God was showing him. And as a wife, that is like heaven to me because I didn't, it wasn't my responsibility. I didn't carry the stress. I wasn't fearful. I wasn't anxious about how it was affecting our children. But it wasn't until I stood aside, released my expectation of him, that he found his feet in how to fight the battles. So it's like giving each other permission to take off the armour that we put on each other, which feels clunky and not right for us, and trust God for the armour that he has given to both husbands and wives. As men, you are called to lead your family. You are called to lead the family. It is not your wife's job to lead, although she has a role in that, absolutely. But the the husband has gets a vision, and it's and it's this age old um, verse, you know, husbands and wives, sub, sub, wives submit to your husbands, wives will willingly submit to husbands when they have a godly vision. We are designed to come under that and to help help you achieve that. We are des- uh, described as helpers, as women. We are to help the man. And when the man seeks God for a vision, and when the man starts stepping out and leading in spiritual matters, the wife finds her place. I can support that. I can encourage that. I can can prophesy into that alongside you and when that is in operation you start marching with such authority and overcoming power you are called to wash her in the word of God and seek God to lead your families through spiritual battles Because when you don't, and this is what happens, as I mentioned before, the wife, well, he's not doing it. Somebody's got to do it. 
I'll step into that and by, by default and the wife ends up fighting battles that open her up to oppression and intimidation. God has anointed for men to do your part and women to do our part. Wives, there are times when, as I said, you're putting armour on your husbands that's not designed for him. And when we do that, he can retreat because he feels belittled and it can take him back to that boy who was overlooked and being the least significant in his family. So I just believe that it's going to be a powerful morning for men and women this morning. And it aligns up with a seasonal word that God has even given our national chairman for the INC movement about men. Men, do, you know, coming into the fullness of their authority and their calling and their destiny. And women, by de it, we, we just come alongside. And we're, we're just so happy to do that and march together in our roles. And I just feel for you, Alan, that God has anointed you to equip men to lead their families in this godly uh, pattern. He's given you keys for breakthrough in healing marriages and families, and you are called to be a Goliath slayer. You are called to be a Goliath slayer. And he's, he's, he's rearranging some thought patterns in concerns with your identity and he's lifting off a reproach from your past, re reproach from how the enemy has come against you and belittled you and accused you. And I just see you just taking charge, and just saying, enough's enough. I'm not having this for my family. You are conquered in Jesus' name. You are conquered. And that can only happen when God releases that anointing. How, the same way that he anointed David to become a king, to fight these battles, he's anointed you to do the same. And it's not going to be a hard slog, but you're, it's going to be, you're going to be more attuned to what you're hearing and just the, the discerning radar is going to fine-tune itself and you're going to be able to just nip things in the bud but be aggressive with it. You've, we've got to remind ourselves and the devil of past victories. David recalled that the Lord had given him victory over the lion and the bear, and he armed himself with those victories. Don't downgrade your testimony. Don't disqualify your talent, your call to follow where he's leading you. It's not going to look like someone else's journey, but it'll be powerful for your journey. David saw his opportunity when others cowered. David was delivering lunch to his brothers. And you might be going about your daily life when suddenly you find yourself in a situation that threatens your health, your purpose and your family. Rather than retreating, God is going, about to do his greatest work in you and call upon that anointing to overcome and be steadfast. The anointing on David's life positioned him to overcome a public battle. He was no longer out in the fields on his own. But this battle was different because he had two armies watching him. And you may be faced with a decision that is intimidating you where you feel the pressure of people watching you. But you're going to break through in a new level of authority and influence, but you are being attacked at the moment by this intimidation. And David's response to, to Goliath in, chap, in verses 45 to 47, and it says, You came against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. For you have defied whom you have defied, this day the Lord will deliver, for the battle is yours. And this is where he, he prophesied a vision that he had for that enemy, a vision for, the, for how he was going to take this Goliath down. And that is another key. Seeing the victory of the cross, 
take that Goliath down. Because he said, I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly may know that the Lord says, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. Don't you love the bold proclamation of David? He would have been around 16, 17 at that age. A boy coming in from, from the fields but knew, knowing that he was anointed, he was anointed, he, he, he drew on that remembrance that he was anointed to lead um, and become king of that nation. And he professed a great boldness in whatever dared to block the armies of Israel because it was his army in the end. Intimidation has that loud voice. And what's the loudest voice that tells you you're finished? It brags that it will take you down before you have a chance to act. It wants to overpower you so that you are too terrified to move. But we need to get our voice back. Let your voice have the unction of the Holy Spirit on it. Let your voice speak the truth of God's word. Let your voice silence the voice of the enemy. And husbands and wives... It's wonderful just to come together and just start to declare some things over your family. Go into battle together and you will see the seas part. You will see things start to shift and start to shake. Be decisive. David ran to the Goliath. He went quickly. The longer you withdraw in fear, the greater hold intimidation will have over you. Saul and his army were held back 40 days listening to his taunts and they were cowering in fear. What are you listening to? The devil doesn't speak if you're just playing nice and safe because you're not being effective. But once you get a vision and once you start um, taking territory and seeing breakthrough in your family. The devil doesn't like that. So we're in a battle, but the battle is the Lord's. We have the victory. Keep pushing against that, because God is developing us and expanding his capacity in us as we take that battle on. And finally, use Goliath's sword. Follow through and finish the job. David cut off his head with Goliath's own sword, sword and that giant would never rise again. Intimidation you may be facing will not destroy you. Jesus has already removed the weapon. In Colossians 2 verse 15 it says he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority. At having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing them in it. Triumphing over them in it. Pull down that authority. You carry that same authority. You're anointed for it. Disarm your Goliath now. He's underestimated you to his own detriment. Let's cut off that voice of fear and intimidation. And as I have the um, band up, that would be wonderful. Because I just really believe that God wants to anoint us, husbands and wives, men and women, to take down this giant. But more than that, step into the anointing and the call to, uh, to overcome intimidation. And I just feel that the, you, you will conquer the fear and anxiety that is an absolute epidemic in our families. We've got seven-year-olds taking drugs because they're anxious. There's so much fear from the world, from the media, saying it's all doom and gloom. There's so much confusion around their, their identity, some, some, so much pressure around their um, 
their God-given identity. There is a battle that's going on. But mums and dads, men and women, let's conquer this. Let's walk in a different spirit. Let's walk in a greater capacity in the Holy Spirit. Let's take a hold of our new creation. You are in Christ. You are powerful. You are strong because of the Holy Spirit that's in you. Become that other person. Become that in Christ person. And you will see um, just pathways. You will see the, the, the Dead Sea part. You will see impossible situations that have been oppressing you for years suddenly just shift. And God can do it in a moment. You, you'll just feel suddenly just, just free. And the battle is, is off your flesh. And you know that you're standing confidently in a place of authority where God is fighting for you. So if you, we could all just stand together and if you could sing something amazing, <laughs> as I know it will be, and just really lean into what God is, is speaking to you about. You know, it may not have been everything that I said. It may have been one sentence. But grab a hold of that because it will be your key to break through into new place. Amen.